Welcome to the second of our two-part installment on actuation. This lesson takes an introductory look at DC motors. DC, or direct current motors, are widely used in mechatronic systems. In fact, DC motors are widely used in most everyday applications, from uh, toys to dentist drills at the dentist office. So let's take a deeper look at DC motors. Specifically, let's take a look at the brushed DC motor. A DC motor is an electromagnetic actuator, and the electric component of that actuation is provided by a coil. So through this coil, we're running some current where I is defining the current that's in that coil. And often there are many loops of the coil, but I'm just going to draw one here for the sake of clarity. The magnetic component of this electromagnetic actuator is provided by these magnets. And we have both a north pole and a south pole for the magnets. These magnets set up a magnetic field, I'll call that beta, and this magnetic field is moving from north to south. At the end of the coil, we have what's referred to as the commutator, and up against the commutator are the brushes. It's these brushes that give this motor the term, the brushed DC motor. So the commutator is in physical contact with the brushes as it spins, uh, and that's providing the electrical contact that uh, permits the current to flow through the coil. And that current is generated via a supply voltage, which is attached to the brushes. So the voltage source through the brushes to the commutator, that's ultimately generating the current through the coil. The magnets are generating the magnetic field, and it's the interaction between the brushes and the commutator that drive the performance of the brushed DC motor. We should also note that the permanent magnets, they form the stator component of my motor, the stationary component. And the coil that's rotating, that's my rotor, or the rotating component of my brushed DC motor. Let's now explore this interaction between the current in my loop and my magnets. Let's begin with the Lorentz force law. The Lorentz force law says that a force will be generated when there is a current through a length of wire subject to a magnetic field. So I is the current in the coil, L is my length of coil, and beta is my magnetic field. We can look at that graphically. Here we have our north pole and south pole magnets and a cross section of one loop of wire. So we have current going into the page here and coming out of the page here. We have a magnetic field going from north pole to south pole. So using our right hand rule, if we have a current going into the page crossed with the magnetic field, we're going to end up with a force on our coil of wire. So that force is pulling down on this side of the wire and pulling up on this side of the wire. We can simplify this cross product such that my force will be equal to IL beta times sine of theta. Now, the way this is set up, the direction of the currents is always at 90 degrees to the magnetic field. So that sine of theta, that's going to be one because theta is going to be equal to 90 degrees. Thus, I can rewrite the description of my force as F equals IL times beta. So the force is equal to the current times the length of coil times the magnetic field. For the rotating DC motor, ultimately what we're interested in is the torque. So this coil is rotating about this pivot point here. So we have a distance from the pivot point to the center of the coils, and we have a force. So force times a distance will give us a torque. And that torque will be defined as I, the current through the coil, times some length constant, coil 1, so L coil 1, times L coil 2, times the magnetic field, beta. And in fact, we can simplify this even further, such that T is equal to KT times I. And then this is what we'll ultimately define as our motor law. So this KT term, that's ultimately taking into account the geometry of my coils as well as the magnitude of the magnetic field. And so these define my motor parameters. KT is the torque constant for our motor, and that'll have units of Newton meters per amp. Let's now explore the speed output from this brushed DC motor. Recall that Faraday told us if we have a coil rotating through a magnetic field, that that will generate a voltage trying to oppose that rotation. We refer to this voltage as the back EMF, or VEMF, where EMF is defined as the electromotive force. 
and this VEMF, that's going to be proportional to the rotational speed, right? If I have a rotating coil generating a voltage, then there's going to be some proportionality between this rotational speed and the voltage output. So we can define VEMF as equal to Ke times omega. Ke, that's our speed constant, and omega, that's the rotating speed of our motor, and that's typically provided in units of RPM or radians per second. The speed constant will have units of uh, volts per RPM or volts per radians per second. This equation then, that's defining our generator law. And this is the general principle used for electrical generators, right? They're basically DC motors used in reverse. So we've gone through the math and we've ended up with these two constants, this torque constant and a speed constant, KT and KE. And so now let's take a look at how these two constants are related. For this analysis, we're gonna make a significant assumption. We're going to assume that there's no losses. So that essentially means there's no resistive heating and no friction for the purposes of this analysis. If this is the case, I'm going to have an efficiency equal to one, or in other words, my power output will be equal to my power input. And again, only if this assumption holds true. My power output is defined as my torque times my rotational speed. The power input I can think of as the EMF voltage times the current. Recall that torque was defined as KT times I, so we have KTI omega. And VEMF was KE omega, so we have KE omega I. So from these two equations, we see that the I's and the omegas cancel, and we're left with KT equals KE. Now we had defined these in different units, so if we're going to say they're equal, we need to take that into account. So KT, when provided in units of Newton meters per amp, that'll be 9.55 times 10 to the minus 3 times KE, where KE is now in units of volts per kilo RPM. Another common unit that you'll see for the torque constant is inch ounces per amp. And in this case, we're gonna multiply uh, 1.354 times KE in the case where KE is provided in units of volts per kilo RPM. So take note, in both cases, KE is provided in units of kilo RPM. Using these laws, let's now put together a model of our DC motor. This model is going to include a resistor, an inductor, and the VEMF voltage source, all three of those components in series. The resistance in this case, this is going to be the coil resistance given in ohms. L is going to be our coil inductance provided in henrys. And VEMF, using the generator law, that'll be equal to Ke times omega. We'll connect our DC motor model to a supply voltage, and that supply will source some current I. So here is our DC motor model. Uh, we have a supply voltage of Vs and a current supplied through my coil of I. Applying Kirchhoff around our loop, we see that Vs will be equal to Vr, the voltage drop across the resistor, plus Vl, the voltage drop across the inductor, plus VEMF. Let's take a look at the voltage drop across the inductor. So VL will be equal to L times di dt. So the inductance times the derivative of the current through the inductor or the change of current with respect to time. Thus, if we make the assumption that we're operating at steady state, VL will be equal to zero. If this is the case, we can now redefine Vs as being equal to Vr, that'll be the current times the resistance, plus VEMF, which will be Ke times omega. We know from our motor law that this current will be equal to the torque, T, divided by the motor constant, KT. Omega is our speed, so we can redefine Vs as equal to T over KT times R plus KE times omega. So this model of my DC motor, this is ultimately describing, uh, in terms of a design, how I can uh, take the trade or play between the torque and the speed that can be provided by my motor given some supply voltage.